And congratulations. Are you a little disappointed at the way the stock is trading in the first few minutes? Yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great opportunity for us that comes after a, a year of intense work to work on all the separation from Honeywell, and uh, now it's a very exciting day for and the recognition of all the work we've done and the recognition of the maturity of the company that can now stand alone on its own feet moving forward because of the success we have on the marketplace and the maturity we have into operations. GTX which you're the president and CEO of, no longer has the heft of the Honeywell balance sheet behind it. Olivier, what do you plan on doing to convince shareholders that you can indeed, you know, aspire to great things on your own? Yeah, the first thing is that we need to recognize that we are a technology company working into the automotive industry. We were that technology company as part of the Honeywell Group, and now we have even more opportunity to tell our story moving forward. We are not a classic auto supplier. Uh, we've been pioneering technology for the last 60 years and moving forward, not only working on turbochargers, but also on connected vehicle solutions and on electrification. Uh, Olivier, so talk me through how the business is going to evolve. We've spent the day, a lot of the, in fact, not just today, a lot of days talking about Tesla. I, electric cars, they have fewer parts, they have better reliability, all of these kinds of things that, that are going to be the future of, of automotive technology. How does a company like you make that transition? How quickly can you make that transition? Well, first of all, for us as a company, electrification is a wonderful opportunity. And obviously in electrification, you have all kinds of electrification, hybrid vehicles, battery electric vehicles, but also hydrogen powered vehicles with fuel cells. And uh, it's a great opportunity for us because the biggest growth of electrification will come from hybrid vehicles. And hybrid vehicles will be even more turbocharged than the internal combustion engine that you have today in the cars. So that, that's just fantastic for us. So opening up for the opportunity to put new technology on those vehicles. So all in all, we see it a big deal. Referring to battery electric, obviously, I think it's just Mr. Stavares that was sharing with you that there is a cost issue for the timing for the car makers. And uh, there will be huge growth on battery electric. But the industry think that yeah. the majority, the vast majority of the vehicles will be with internal combustion engine and hybridation. Olivia, how quickly does that happen? Like, how quickly does the powertrain get electrified? I, I'm assuming you can make CO2 regulations by just putting a little bit of electrification on top of a, uh, on top of a petrol powertrain. Do we go like sort of 10%, 20%, 30%? Is that how this is going to work? How quickly does that process unfold in terms of the hybrid, sort of going from a little bit of hybridization through to a lot of hybridization through to pure electric? So when you look at it, the industry thinks that we'll get to 30% uh, more or less of uh, hybrid vehicle, 30% of the global car production by 2025. So that's a, that's a big deal. Now the speed is obviously the speed of the automotive industry, but I can tell you that now it's moving really, really fast and we'll get to this number of 30% 30, 30 by 2025. Olivier, I want to ask you about today's story that Lawrence Culp has been named to the post following John Flannery of uh, CEO of GE. What do you make of that and will you have some competition to reckon with in turbochargers? No, I don't think, uh, at first, I would not like to comment on the GE-specific issues and I don't think it, uh, it's applying very well to a company like us. I want to ask you if you're a little disappointed that the stock is trading down 7%, where do you feel fair value is for GTX? Well, it's always difficult on the first day of trading. As you know, we were part of Honeywell. You have a lot of churn into the investor base on the first days of trading. Uh, we are ourselves not part of uh, the S&P 500, but we've been uh, selected to be part of the S&P 600 small caps last week. So we'll see a churn into the investors uh, on the first days of trading. This is really something we are expecting. And obviously, we'll, uh, we'll look at that to settle down as we announce even more moving forward about the business when it gets to uh, the quarterly results.
Olivier, can I ask you about supply chains? Can I talk to you about trade and the deal that's just been done between Mexico, the United States and Canada? How big a deal for your business is that? How worried are you about how supply chains are going to be affected as we see what's happening with China, potentially Japan and Europe going forward? How, how much time are you spend thinking about this and what do you make of the deal that's been done with Mexico and Canada? This is obviously something we are following very closely, but when you look at us, we are a global company. We have about 13 factories around the world, and we pretty much produce in the region for the region. So producing in China for China, uh, producing in North America for North America, producing in Europe for Europe. We don't have a lot of cross-regional flows into our supply chain. So, so far, uh, the impact is insignificant, but we are obviously monitoring very closely the, the developments of all that.